Hi everyone, good evening. Uh, my name is Martin, I uh, work in Zurich for Microsoft. I'm a part of the Visual Studio Code team. We are 10 people in Zurich and 10 people in Redmond. And uh, I want to show you some of the latest developments of Visual Studio Code, but also of uh, the Java extension, which has recently got a lot of attention. I know maybe you heard of it. Uh, Red Hat has started the extension together with us, Microsoft. And uh, in the recent months, there has been more manpower to it. Even Microsoft joined with some developers. I was also working on it. And now we came up with uh, yeah, new cool features, including a debugger. Uh, so maybe let me, let me quickly start with a bit uh, introduction on Visual Studio Code. How many of you know what Visual Studio Code is? Yeah. So it's a, a lightweight, fast editor that uh, you know should help you modify your configuration files, whatever files, but also kind of aims to be useful for uh, software development. You can open folders. You can open now. You can open multiple folders. Uh, so we we really want to be more than just the simple editor. We run on uh, multiple platforms, Mac, Linux, Windows. Uh, we are an open source project. We are actually one of them on GitHub. We are most one of the most uh, uh, active open, project, uh, open source projects right now with lots of uh, contributors, lots of uh, PRs. And uh, yeah, we, we, we are trying to do open development, that means all the, all the plans are open, we can uh, listen to the feedback, whatever issue is voted up the most will come on the next plan. Uh, yeah. Visual Studio came out two and a half years ago uh, in, as, as a beta, and then one and a half year ago it became the 1.0 release, and it has, uh, yeah, good for us, been quite popular. Uh, at the moment we have over two and a half million active users a month. Uh, and there is uh, uh, an ecosystem of extensions for Visual Studio Code, which is uh, uh, also growing and growing. There's, I just, we just, just uh, checked uh, lately, it's about, about over 4,600 extensions now on the marketplace for various things like uh, editor extensions, new commands, new languages, SCM integrations. Yeah. You may wonder, well, Microsoft they have Visual Studio. What, what is Visual Studio Code? Is that, is that going to be the new Visual Studio? Is that the replacement? And no, it's, it's not. It it's wants to be an editor. And uh, we place ourselves actually very close to an editor. We want to help uh, developers in the areas of uh, multi-language projects where an IDE is just not the right fit. Right? Uh, we've, I've started. So I, I've worked on, uh, I've worked, uh, on Eclipse. Uh, when I started, I joined IBM, and for like over seven years, I was an Eclipse JDT UI a developer. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm really much an, an IDE guy, but then once I swapped to web uh, projects, I realized uh, this is a different world, right? You have uh, lots of different file types. Uh, there's new uh, frameworks coming up, new languages coming up. Uh, it's very hard for an IDE to, to keep up with that, right? And really build, you know, deliver you an integrated workflow over all these languages. So many people went back or uh, even stayed at editors all the time. And uh, so there was the feeling that Microsoft also needs to get an offering for, so for these people that really like to be editor-centric. And that's where VS Code fits in. So we want to be light, lightweight and fast. We want to be keyboard-centric. Uh, we want to work on files, we want to work on folders. But we want to be more than an editor. We want to actually include a little bit of uh, the in what we call the inner circle of development, things uh, that are very close to your source code, and that includes the, we, 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 we said that includes debugging, where you would like to step through your source code and right, right away go into the source code and maybe make a change, and some of the debugging scenarios actually allow that, right? You can even continue debug while you uh, edit. We want to. We added the source code management views to our editor, so uh, you have that close to your fingernails, fingers. And then we also have an integrated terminal. But uh, we do. We don't want to be an IDE. You will find no wizards. There is uh, no uh, great UI. 
our configuration editor is just a text file. We have some in the code assist for it. There is, and that's I think most important, there is no built-in project system, right? We, uh, we don't want to invent another project system and then you lock you in into that. Uh, we're going to use the ones that are out there, so if there is uh, in Java, if there's Maven and Gradle, we want to support that, but we don't want to come up with our own project system. And there's also no build system. Uh, we rely on you to have your build scripts and you just use your intern in you know, it has an integrated terminal to run it. And the only thing we do is we offer you the way to add some key bindings to it. So you can run your build command on a key binding. And you can also attach a problem detector to it. So uh, once the output comes from your build command, um, we will detect the errors and show them in the problems view so you can navigate to your uh, problem. And another thing that is, uh, we kind of focus a lot on is the multi-language, right? We, we want to have the, a big, big breadth on languages and we want to support them as good as possible. But of course, yeah, that's, it's not easy to have a good integration of all the languages. Uh, the ones that we picked are m the most in interesting one for Microsoft, right? This is some Microsoft technology here. TypeScript is a typed JavaScript uh, that uh, Microsoft has done a lot of investment. Then there is, of course, C Sharp, C++. F sharp, uh, all, these, all these language, we get, of course, a lot of attention and we bring all our tooling that is there in Microsoft to the Visual Studio Code. And, uh, but and there's many, many more languages and we hope that the uh, community you know, comes in and check today, there's over 1,000 language extensions out of the 4,000 at the moment, so it's pretty impressive. But of course, they're not all different languages, so there's a lot of people probably trying to do same extensions. Um, there, uh, one, one, one way we, we tackled that, so right, you want to bring languages to an editor, uh, you cannot have the full language support right away. So there's different levels of integration. And that you have to admit that most languages that are supported in Visual Studio Code are really just very basically supported. They just have syntax highlighting and maybe they have some uh, you know, brackets matching. Uh, and that's good. But uh, the APIs of the extent, the extension APIs of Visual Studio Code are formed in such a way that you can, you know, increase the support by adding new and new new things. So all, all of these uh, terms I have here are supports that you can add to a language. And actually, different extensions can, for the same language, uh, contribute uh, the different supports. And then we even tried, you know, merge these supports. So like, if two uh, extensions provide uh, code assist for Java, then of course you will see them both. And it's up to the user to install whatever extensions he wants and can see whatever extensions uh, and can see the code assist he wants. So quickly going to this list, and this list then comes again in the demo. Uh, syntax highlighting is, is exactly one of the easiest things to do because we are based, based on text made grammars, and text made grammars are the quasi standard of all uh, editors. So you will find probably already, if you search a bit, find the text made grammar for, for your new language. And if not, you would just start uh, using an existing language and you know changing the way. Um, so that gives you some syntax, syntax highlighting. Another easy one is uh, the brackets and indentation rules. These are all based on uh, declar declar declarations. So you have to give a list of brackets. You have to give a regex. And out of that, we can already give some useful tooling. You know, indentation after a curly bracket increases one. If you have the closing bracket, we decrease it. Uh, yeah, there are snippets which are not context, context sensitive, so they show up everywhere. Well, that's not really super useful, but still, it's a start for your language. And then further down, now comes more and more work you have to do. And uh, actually, the next things like document symbols, that's the outline, right? You want to see the class, the files, the methods in your class. There, you probably already have to write a scanner and a parser that is really working for your language. You can still try to do it with regex, but uh, yeah, things get fishy then. Together with that, the uh, similar thing is color decorators, right? In CSS, you've probably seen it, we, we show the actual color of a value. There is formatting. To, want to do a formatter, you actually only need a uh, syntax uh, tree to find out where the white spaces are, and then you can start working on that, removing them, adding them. Um, and syntax validation. So this is still, s well, it's not simple now. I think writing a scanner, writing a parser, that's quite some work. And uh, we shouldn't forget it's the maintenance that is actually the most, the hardest thing, especially in languages that change uh, and evolve a lot. So you can never, you know, you can never 
finish some declare something finished because as soon as a new language feature is added and your parser declares this new thing as an error, people will you know get back to you back to you and say yeah, uh, your stuff is uh, not good enough, and then you have to work on it. More things then you really need symbol lookup. Uh, you need to resolve across files and then you can do features like hovers, code assists. Uh, then you do code actions that quick fixes, right? Uh, you select a problem, you get suggestions to it, semantic validation. Then, of course, all the references and go to declaration. E uh, code lens, if you will see it in the demo, is, is basically mostly of fine references, but it uh, allows you to add much many more kind of searches right in the code, like find declaration, go implementers, and things like that. And then refactorings, right? We, the moment uh, have only rename refactoring VS Code, but there is the plan to bring this language framework to, to more and more, so that you can also, you know, contribute uh, richer refactorings. Uh, another, and then last, we have the integration of a debugger. Uh, well, you probably cannot write the debugger for your language yourself, but uh, you can adapt to some of the debugging capabilities your VM has. So, and that's what we did in Java. So uh, all these things I will show again in the demo, uh, but this just shows the various dif degrees of integration that VS Code allows you. And no, now you say, well, that's great, right? I mean, I, I just did all that. We just implemented the Java support for Eclipse. Uh, and you're serious, you're going to do that again for Visual Studio Code, you know, just want to write everything now in TypeScript. And then I'll do it in a year again, when the new editor comes out, which is even cooler than Visual Studio Code. This doesn't work, right? You cannot re-implement all the language supports for all the editors all the time. It's, it's this huge matrix which gets bigger and bigger, right? More languages, more editors. And, uh, well, yeah, we, <laughs> of course, also don't like that. And out of that came the uh, language server protocol, which is uh, behind most of the language supports that we do. So the idea is that uh, you implement the supports in your own process, in your own language of choice. And you communicate back or you are asked from Visual Studio Code through a standardized protocol, which is called the language server protocol. That's a very simple protocol based on JSON, most the res request response, and then there's also some notifications flowing back and forth. And these APIs are very close to what the editor wants, right? So the editor says, I want to do code assist at offset 50. What you get is, first you get the document, which is the current dirty document uh, that is there at the moment, and then you get the uh, offset 50, and you give back the proposal. So you will not give back an ASD. There is no knowledge on the VS Code side at all on, th on the program structure. You give back the finished results, and they can show as is in the editor. And this uh, language server protocol idea has also quite resonated, and uh, there's a lot of uh, integrations for other editors around now too. You get Emacs integration, Atom integration, uh, even integrations on web uh, web IDE. So I think this is is pretty cool. Just show the list. Like we have the OmniSharp server; it's implemented in C Sharp. The PowerShell server is also in C Sharp. Then the Go the Go tools are implemented in Go, and they actually pretty interesting. Go has uh, many of the language services uh, uh, modeled as uh, command line uh, uh, commands. So all that the language server does is running commands and taking the output of these commands and you bring, it, bring them in the form of the language server protocol. So that's, that's an interesting way for um, you know, tool providers to kind of not only kind of model their commands in such a way that they're also useful for uh, development. Especially, mostly the the persons who provide the VM or provide the compilers are the ones that have you know, the full fullest knowledge of the language and are uh, actually are the most suited to provide the tools for tool uh, the commands for such tooling. And yeah, in the list there you see Java, and there you already see it. It's an Eclipse Java server because what we did is we just uh, you know took Eclipse, we took out the core parts of the JDT tooling. Um, and all the core parts uh, related to resources and uh, files, and every UI, all the UI is gone, and it's bundled in its own uh, process. Um, so we, of course, get a quite some quality out of that, right? It Eclipse JDT is a, is a proven component, and it has still a lot of development going on, especially in the space of uh, Java 9, and 
we can profit from that. There's some restrictions and then you're going to see them later. Yeah, I, I think I already said everything about the language server protocol. It's, it's a JSON based. It's basically communication of your open buffers. They go over to the other process. And then it's basically all these services that I listed, uh, they're direct commands for it. Yeah. Give me a hover at this position, give me code completion at this position, and so on. Uh, servers can, you know, just implement the things they want. They, the first is a, they first negotiate together with the client, what can they do? And the client tells them, what do I want? The server says, that's what I can do. And that's the way that uh, the whole thing is set up. And I mentioned, right, we added also a debugger, and, and the debugger adapter works in a very similar way. So at the moment, it's not yet part of the language server protocol. It's, it's a separate thing. It's, it's kind of Microsoft-y uh, only. Uh, but the plan is to also bring that in the, the language server protocol space. It's, it's really an adapter. It's a, it's, a it's a protocol that is a talking to an adapter, right? The, the debug adapter is the one that starts the debuggy, like the Java VM, and then uses already existing protocols, just at JDI, uh, to talk to the VM. Uh, and then once it gets the results, like you know, then it brings them into the form of uh, of the debugger uh, protocol. Okay, that's the slides, and now I will dive into some demonstration. Do you, is there any questions already now, which I should answer before I? Go on. I work on the Mac. No, normally I work on Linux, now it's, it's the Mac. Um, that's the cool thing if you work on a cross-platform project, so you can choose your platform. I open, I, 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 I just for demonstration I use this uh, pet clinic, maybe you have seen it, it's a part of Spring Boot. It's a simple project that has an SQL database and has a, a data layer and then it has uh, pages that are served. It's not super exciting but I think it just serves the purpose here. Um, it's a Maven project and w when, when, you when I open it you have to be very, you know, quickly see something is happening right away. While I open it already, there is already things going on in the explorer over there, files are generated. Uh, what's happening is I installed the Java extension. I here I go to the extensions view. I have already some extensions installed. Uh, one interesting is the extension pack. It's like a it's like a composite. It has in there the debugger, it has in there the language support. And in the future maybe more. It's things that we think are, you know, kinda kinda essential for Java. Here is the core part of it. It's the language support for Java. It's by Red Hat. Uh, it was created together with us in a hacking session like uh, over one and a half years ago. Most of the people in our lab, so in the Zurich lab, actually from Eclipse. So you know, Eric Gamma, Andre Weinand, Dirk Boehmer, we are all the old Eclipses. Uh, at some point joined Microsoft, switched over to web development, and now we're there in Visual Studio Code. So it was kind of always very, <laughs> it was always our secret plan or you know, wish <laughs> to actually bring back the Eclipse knowledge. And, uh, and this happened in a code camp session uh, where everybody sat together. Red Hat it was also there. They are now also the owners of the J online editor, and so have interest in that, bringing Java uh, language support to there. Uh, and as I said, yeah, as this can, can gain some momentum in, in uh, lately. It's only it doesn't it doesn't support all the Eclipse features. It only does Maven and Gradle projects. You can open Eclipse projects, but this is kind of limited. And we, we really don't want to go in the Eclipse space. Right? We don't want to be in a replacement for Eclipse. I think if you are an Eclipse project, it probably everything works well for you. This is, is really for multi-language projects, and you have maybe some uh, Java part of it, or uh, and you, you can profit from a, a code editor that not only speaks Java, but many other languages too. And the other thing is the debugger for Java. So it has already a list of features. So it just got, uh, you know, opened like a month ago. And there's a lot of, there's some more features coming. Um, the ones that we have now are pretty basic, but the expression evaluation, hot code replacement, that's all in the makings. Okay, I go back to by project. No, some quick um, 
in, in VS Code, everything is keyboard driven. So I just have to tell you what I'm doing here. Command P is, is the way that you open files. Uh, I'm sorry, Java. Couldn't quickly open, go to, to files. Control Shift P is the one that's the command prompt. If you want to quickly find the command, you go here. These are all the Java commands, but there's not much Java commands we need at the moment. Uh, let me just look at the files. You see syntax highlighting is there. There is, of course, bracket matching. Some indentation is working. Oh, that's all cool. That's probably you already expected. And oh, there is already a warning. Oh, the serializable. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's look at all the problems. Yeah, Java is, of course, uh, workspace aware. B based on the prom XML, it knows all the files, uh, source files, and where they are, and so we can build on that. Open that, you see there's a lot of other um, serializable warnings, really not so interesting. But here's one. Oh, too many imports. Oh, there's a light bulb. Uh, let me try it. And do organize import. Yeah, and of course, all the eclipses here will already see it's so similar. Huh? And then most of the features that I show you now will maybe not surprise you, right? It's it's really we really uh, Eclipse is really nicely layered, right? So there's the core part, and it's especially the JDD core is very powerful, uh, and has very good APIs that can be leveraged. Is Control Shift O is is your outline? Again, we we kind of go away from views, but rather do typing and filtering. In this one uh, quick view is like uh, yeah, not the Swiss Army pocket knife of all our, the, all the UIs we have are using it. Uh, that's the outline is going like that. You can select fields and see where are you know the occurrences of it. And this is not textual. This is of course really by resolving. You can do. Um, we do some typing. No, let me first go into more there. You have already seen here. This is what we call the code lens. It's uh, something out of Visual Studio. It's in-place information, which is extendable, so by any extension. Some people have here their Git information. Uh, you can have you know, history information. It's this line where the I one references is, is extendable. The one references opens the peak view. It's an in-place uh, results view. It's not an interesting result. Um, so you can you look at all the references without having to leave the editor that you are working in. And when you double-click, you would open it. Of course, all these actions are also in the command line, uh, command menu, but you probably rather would find them through the command prompt and then find out the shortcut of it. Typing. So, oh, maybe before I do some changes, let's let's run the project, and I go to the terminal. And I run MVN. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. And this, I just did compile. That means it, it's compiling into the target here. And that lets me now run my com, uh, debugger. The debugger is not yet set up, but on the first run, you are asked what type of project is that. It's a Java project, and it does some automatic detection. It found out that the clinic application is our main class. It's the only main class we have. So it filled it out already. So this works as is. We can now really run the run button, and we go on. So you see the server started up, and we're waiting for uh, the port to be opened. Here it is. It's port 8080. I go to my browser and see if this works. So this is the pet clinic. Yeah, you can, it's a, it's, it's a database with pets and doctors and owners and so on, yeah. So and then let's now, of course, try, can we also debug that? And I have to find uh, some interesting place where there is a little bit going on here. Is it the breakpoint here? Go back to my browser. I'll open one of these guys, edit a pet. Okay, and here I am in the validate routine. It looks step through, and you see some features like the uh, inline variable, uh, the variables. Of course, you see them on hover, but you can see them also right away at the end of the line. Um, going to the debug view, and 
you have the, the local variables view, you can browse through that. You can uh, have some watches on uh, variables. You cannot have yet expressions. Mm, sorry. The expression evaluation is not yet there, that's coming. Where we have the different threads that are here, you can pause threads, not, not at the moment, because we, we are middle of the debugging. Then, yeah, stack views. It's, it's the basic set of things you ex expect from a debugger. It's uh, hopefully useful for, uh, you know, for development. Okay, well, yeah, I want to conclude with some editing and yeah, sorry, I uh, probably not really useful stuff I'm going to do now. I'm just going to show you. Um, yeah, I'm going to add an extra I use a method before it is initialized. I can create it. I can add a parameter to it and also immediately create the parameter. I can, do of course, the code assist. No. I want to find out if there is already a visit of a, 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 a so that this is a database of uh, pets that go to the doctor. I want to find out if the pet has already gone to the doctor at its, uh, when it was born. Um, yeah. Uh, basically just showing a little bit of uh, Java 8 syntax. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm embarrass embarrassing myself here. It's not easy to type <laughs> on the front of the stage. Yeah. Okay. So that was my demo. Uh, I hope y you give it a chance. Try it out and uh, be active. So there is uh, various web pages where you can get active. So first, the Visual Studio Code page. It has the downloads of Visual Studio Code. In for all the platforms, there is stable and insiders, right? This is a daily build, this is a monthly build. Uh, we have a, for the monthly builds, you can see what's up every, every time. So the new next one is coming out in a week. Then this is our uh, report with the issues. You can file new issues. You can make pull requests. This is the marketplace with the extensions. It has the same content as what you have seen here over there, where I already installed some of the Java part. Then here is another Git repo, so the Eclipse is two-part. The language server is under the Eclipse Foundation. Um, it is used by many, many projects, and then you, we also have a repository that is just for, uh, for VS Code, for the VS Code adapter. That's this one. That's it. Thank you very much. Yeah? Although it's um, basically an editor, um, what about the factoring features like renaming, moving from classes, extracting content? Yeah. So the question is, it's, it's an editor. What about refactoring features? Are they still fitting in the feature set? Yeah, rename we already have, and there is a big pressure coming from C Sharp, which has a lot of these refactorings too. At the moment, they're in the category of code actions, right? So you can invoke a quick fix on a position that is not, not an error, it's just a position, and then you see some refactorings, but that it's maybe not really a, a nice UI, and many people will not find it. So there is now, it's coming now that we have m more of these providers and there will be more prominent actions that it's like extract method, extract local, that are maybe useful, that are useful or across languages or that will be used across languages. 
Yeah. Yeah. So yes, there is more refactorings coming. Also in Java, we all have these refactorings, and then we want to use them. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Is there a hotkey for the code assist? Uh, hotkey? <laughs> what do you mean? Control space or? No, no, for the little um, light bulb. Ah, for the light bulb, it's uh, control po control dot. Yeah, and th the cursor has to be on top of the error. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yes? I, uh, I use several languages. I wonder uh, then should I, can I load several extensions? I'm, I'm, I'm always careful just not to crash my own Windows machine because yeah. there's too many stuff. Okay. Maybe what would be your guidance? Mm -hmm. Or is it like there's a specific yeah. install so that you stick to different instances of yeah. Visual Studio Code with different inst extensions? Uh -huh. Okay. So your question is, should you just install all the extensions for all the languages you need, or would you rather have one uh, you know, instance that has only these extensions? I think you should install them all because we have a, a kind of different architecture than Visual Studio or Eclipse. Uh, everything is running in their own processes. Uh, so the UI is an own process, and then there is the extension host. That's the one that actually serves the different extensions. And then these language servers, there are different processes again. Um, that's pretty cool for, uh, you know, you cannot crash the UI, you cannot freeze the UI in your extension. If you freeze the extension host, we will de detect it and restart the extension host. Same for the language servers. So this is one of the lessons learned from, from Eclipse, right? And of course, y there will be pr probably also the time when there's so many processes running uh, <laughs> that uh, we have to, you know, look at that. But uh, yeah, that's the underlying architecture. Yeah. My yes? C can I have the blue logo back? <laughs> the blue logo is coming back, right? It's it just just a few days and it's back. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody liked the orange logo, so. <laughs> but we still have the same logo, unfortunately. <laughs> it's the it's the family it's the family logo for Visual Studio and so we we are part of a visual studio family and yeah, everybody has the same kind of similar logo with the bending and folding. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.